So welcome to this episode of uh, Ken Mogi's Brain, Street Brain Radio. Uh, in this episode, I would like to discuss dreaming. And, uh, you know, uh, for some time, I kept a record of dreams on my notebook, and it's the file is still here. Uh, and the last uh, two weeks or so, I have been recording my dreams uh, for, by speaking to my iPhone. Uh, shortly after I woke up, and if I remember the contents of the dreams, uh, I record them. And it's quite an interesting thing to do, and it's probably much better than writing it down in terms of text. Uh, you know, speaking to your iPhone or any smartphone for that matter seems to be a better, much better method just after you have woken up. and. So I'm actually running for traffic signal. Uh, yeah, <clears throat> yeah, this is uh, typical proceedings for this uh, stream, Sweet Brain Radio format, as you know. Uh, so I have been recording dreams, and it's quite interesting. It, it has been mentioned already, I think, uh, in, especially in the context of lucid dreaming, that once you start recording or consolidating your memory after you have woken up about your about the contents of your memory then the network of uh, in the brain uh, which would transfer the information from the dream experience onto the semantic and total memory will be are strengthened so that one tends to remember even more details about the dreams and it's quite interesting how you can restructure your uh, associations with dreaming of course in the very extreme case of lucid dreaming in which you can control suppose three the direction that your dreams are taking um, the circuits that are involved are more actively uh, involved in your act of dreaming so that there might be even conscious uh, controls and this is quite an interesting concept but anyway I am coming to it prefer I need to stop my recording for a sec so I will come back to this uh, episode later so uh, I'm back on the street. I'm walking in Ginza now. Uh, Ginza is, of course, the central commercial zone, most prestigious <coughs> commercial zone in Tokyo. And uh, it's always great to be here. And it's certainly great to be talking to you on the Street Brain Radio about dreams. Uh, so I was talking about my habit in the last few weeks of recording dreams into my iPhone and when you do that it's quite interesting uh, actually I publish what I record on my Japanese YouTube channel so I speak in Japanese when I record my dreams and there are certain techniques that you might employ when you do that uh, sometimes uh, you know the items in the dream might have personal connotations. Uh, research has shown that in the dream there would be events that are you know probably tied to your personal experiences in the last few weeks uh, because uh, the memory is consolidated with the help of hippocampus into the temporal cortex. Uh, these would be sorted out and you know stream right and that's how we uh, you know have dreams uh, dreams are kind of a reflection of the brain's function to uh, sort out and consolidate memories that's the theory so when you recall back recall on your dream uh, there might be some personal details the people and events and so on but uh, these pe- these things are not necessarily interesting to other people Uh, you know probably you have had this experience that 
when you have your friends telling what dreams they had. Uh, these are not particularly interesting, are they? I mean, you know, they, these might be interesting for themselves, personally, but for someone who is just listening to the dreams, uh, it's not necessarily interesting. So, you know, when so you do a recording of dreams, uh, it would be great if you could kind of make a jump from very personal details into some abstract forms. For example, if you uh, had a dream where you, have, uh, you had a uh, you know, personal friend of you appear, uh, instead of stating his name, you probably can state the person's probably like age, uh, appearance, impression, and so on. It would be always great to kind of neutralize and make an abstract representation of your dreams. That would make your recordings of your dreams more interesting and more probably scientifically relevant because patterns could be preserved and, you know, um, and in that process, I, I think there are certain jumps that you make because uh, no matter how you might state your dreams linguistically, it, it doesn't really do justice to the whole details of uh, experimental, you know, variety that you encounter in your dreams. So you just can't represent them linguistically when you record your dreams, either verbally, as I am doing right now, or in terms of text, as I used to do when I'm a couple of decades ago. So, so the dream is dream recording is an act of abstraction and making general a very specific uh, element of your yeah, experience. And that's a creative process. So I suspect that recording your dreams, as I'm saying, dream is a great way to nurture your creativity because you really need to think hard about what are actually the essential things that constitute your dreams and uh, there you probably would be able to uh, you know be a really great storyteller uh, you, you, I'm not saying that you make up things I'm just saying that you streamline your memories and that is actually what the brain is doing when they're dreaming anyway so this jump from um, what you have imaged uh, and your linguistic expression is a very interesting and uh, it is something ubiquitous and uh, universal I think not only related to your dreams but in the case of dreams this jump seems to be very prevalent uh, because um, dreams are private experiences and you know um, that is the automotive why or the reason why uh, you when you uh, try to describe something you have dreamt uh, in terms of linguistic expressions um, you know you feel a bit betraying betraying something that is so precious um, precisely because it's a private experience and so it's really interesting uh, you know, that's the same thing is ha actually happening with a conventional process of describing something you have experienced but <clears throat> for example I'm walking now uh, through the back streets of Ginza and I have been in the Gin Kabukiza Tower uh, for a meeting and uh, I was out of the, that. And you know, when as I walk, I am going through back streets and there's a small shrine and there's a uh, sushi place and there's somebody who is talking with his home, Larry. So I'm kind of going away from him. I don't know why. He's talking so loud. <laughs> anyway, um, and I'm on the other side of the uh, street now, and I see some cars and so on. All these things, of course, uh, just some very rudimentary 
representations of what I'm actually, what I'm actually saying. So there's a discrepancy. But uh, this is something public. I mean, you can, if you come to this street, uh, at this particular moment, you would be able to observe all these things. So even if there are some discrepancies uh, between what I actually experience and what I describe verbally, <coughs> you can kind of double check on it so that uh, there won't be any serious problem in principle in reproducing what I'm actually saying. But in the case of dreams, uh, I am dreaming and nobody else is dreaming. And so, you know, there's this genuine problem uh, in reproducing my dream. Uh, when I describe my dreams uh, verbally, my words are the only materials that you can get access to. You cannot get access to my dreams. So that, you know, if there's a jump between what I experience and what I describe verbally, uh, there's such a huge missing opportunity, if you like, uh, for the reality of the dream to be represented faithfully. That's a very interesting and uh, potentially fatal uh, aspect of dream representation. So when I make a recording into my dreams, uh, make, make a recording of my dreams into my iPhone, uh, I am aware of that discrepancy. I am aware of the fact that that's this quantum jump, uh, but um, there's nothing I can do about it. So when I do make that quantum jump, I try to make it as robust as possible, as universal as possible, as I was having saying, and try to represent what uh, universally relevant and what a you know, typically significant uh, in my description of my dreams. Anyway, um, so interestingly, dreams can sometimes represent your unconscious uh, motivations and unconscious hidden desires and so on. And uh, of course, uh, Jigmund Freud was a guy who described, who t t attempted the first scientific uh, description of the dream process. And of course, nowadays, uh, Freud has a really bad reputation. Uh, many people say that his um, writings have been uh, fraught with uh, many misconceptions. And, uh, you know, there's been a cancel culture, really, about Freud. Uh, Freud has been cancelled. And, you know, it's probably difficult to recover uh, properly uh, what Freud has, was saying in, this, in the world context of today. However, uh, I think there's some truth in G what Jigmund Freud was saying. And, uh, you know, it will be bad to cancel his um, writings altogether. Um, you know, it is true that Freud had many misconceptions about sexual desires and, you know, complexities and so on. But um, he also had it right in many aspects of dreams. Uh, you know, he uh, identified some really interesting uh, domains of dreaming and he basically uh, treated dreaming as a channel between uh, the unconscious and conscious. And it, it is quite interesting that you, you do have, actually have access into your unconscious when you dream. So when I talk about my dreams into my iPhone uh, on waking up, uh, I feel as if I am having a privileged glimpse into my unconscious, and that's certainly happening. When it comes to uh, assessing the uh, unconscious uh, through uh, dreaming, uh, I had a really wonderful conversation with um, the you know, really great uh, Jungian uh, psychologist, Hayao Kawai. And um, 
Professor Kawai was a long time、uh, expert、uh, of the psychoanalysis in Japan, and he was professor at the University of Kyoto. And、um, I had a really wonderful discussion with him, and I co authored a book with Professor Kawai. And also, Professor Hayao Kawai is known for his collaboration in a book、uh, with、uh, Haruki Murakami. So, he was one of the most、uh, respected and highly regarded scholars in、uh, psychology、uh, in Japan. And I had the privilege of conversing with him. And I learned、uh, quite a lot from my conversations with、uh, Professor Hayao Kawai. And one of the things he told me. During our sessions, was that you know it's quite difficult for someone to interpret his、uh, dreams because you know what appears in one, what appears in one's dreams is often a blind spot for that subject. So you know it's something that you cannot see psychologically. It's something deeply hidden. So that even if you feel that there's some certain features of A person of an event, of a, an element in dream, you can't really tell what exactly the significance of it is, because、uh, that is in your blind spot. And、uh, Professor Kawai said that you know experts who are trained in the analysis of dreaming can sometimes get access to the secret behind. Uh, a really impressive element in a dream,、uh, because he is he or she is trained to do that, and because he or she doesn't ha- share the blind spot with that person. So that was a quite interesting idea. And in addition, Professor Kawai said that uh, uh, when an analyst gets too close to a subject, you know, getting friendly and. Get to know the person and so on. Then、uh, the analyst starts to share the blind spot with the subject, so that it would become more difficult for the analyst to, you know, identify the inherent, explicit、uh, issues that are represented in some a motif with、uh, within a dream. And、uh, that was a really interesting idea. And when We were conversing. I casually mentioned about a dream with, in which a five-year-old girl appeared, and five, the five-year-old girl in my dream was characterized by the color red.、Uh, she was wearing a, a red skirt, and、uh, redness was something that was、uh, very impressive about, about the girl. But I didn't know what it was that. Uh, was represented by the small girl, five-year-old girl. When I told、uh, Professor Kawai about that,、uh, he immediately told me that it might have something to do with、uh, something that、um, had happened that started in my life five years before. Something that was、uh, new in my life and that has been going on for five years. And that was a really impressive idea. I didn't have this conception that something that was new in my life would be represented、um, by the figure of a five-year-old girl, girl. So that could be possible. I mean, in your in your dreams,、uh, something could be transfigured beyond recognition. So that, for example, if there was an abstract concept like something new in your life and something some new career, for example. That cannot be represented in a dream because it's an abstract idea, right? So, what you could do in your dream is to represent it as something, some tangible、uh, existence. So, in my case,、uh, that might have been the five-year-old girl. And you know, for me personally, it was probably not possible to interpret it as robustly as Professor Kawai Kawai Hayao did.、Uh, so. You know, that was a really impressive exchange of words, and I actually went to、uh, many、uh, Hakuniwa sessions with him,、uh, sandbox sessions, and Professor Kawai was invariably helpful with, in, in in these sessions. And the same pattern, I think, appeared 
again and again. Um, he could identify elements in my dreams that were beyond my uh, cognition because they were presumably, you know, falling into my uh, blind spots. And Professor Hayao Kawai didn't share the blind spot, so he could really, really make an interesting case about that element in my dream chan. That was a really impressive session. And, you know, I remember vividly the impression that I used to have to this day. So, um, you know, uncovering the hidden meaning of your dreams is something like an archaeology. Uh, you have an item, but you actually don't know what that item represents. So you need to have to apply a kind of a process of guesswork and that is what I do uh, when I uh, talk into my iPhone, uh, keeping record of my dreams. And, you know, as I said, uh, it's quite interesting to, as I showed, loop between your know, cognitive process in conscious cognitive processes and your know, dreaming state, because you know, that's what you do right, in the build up to the uh, lucid dreaming. Um, I never practiced lucid dreaming in any serious manner. Um, I w was interested in it uh, at some time, but I didn't really practice it. But the general principle of the lucid dreaming seems to be that uh, in your dream, you ask whether this is a dream or not. And when you're awake, uh, like I'm awake, I'm not sleepwalking. Walking right, right now, I'm awake, I think. Uh, when you are awake, uh, you ask yourself whether you are dreaming or not. And that is the basic, one of the basic techniques of lucid dreaming build, build up. And you, if you repeat that in your daily life, gradually you, your uh, dreams would become more lucid, uh, meaning you have more conscious control over the outcomes of the dream and that's a quite interesting aspect of dreaming and so the general principle of this dreaming would be to uh, we to establish a loop between your conscious cognitive processes and unconscious processes that would eventually lead to dreaming and this is a kind of digging of the unconscious self because uh, otherwise it wouldn't it wouldn't be come to right uh, you know these things that uh, lack in your know, unconscious self and um, in that I, I think we really nurtured creativity because creativity is nothing but an uncovering of the hidden agenda if you like in the yeah, unconscious processing and there are many things um, uh, hidden and you know earlier I think in an earlier episode of Search Brain Radio maybe you, we were discussing about or maybe we didn't uh, I, I'm just I was probably dreaming uh, you know I uh, you know in the last few weeks I came across this idea that you know when you create something the association that Connecting of the dots, uh, in the famous phrase of Steve Jobs, um, is occurring all the time in your unconscious. So that when you achieve, when you create something, uh, it is not done at that moment as would be uh, summarized uh, from the point of view of your conscious experience. But uh, the information processing itself is done before the you know conscious realization of uh, the element uh, you know in the so-called aha moment when you have, uh, become aware of something you are actually uncovering something that has been inherent in your unconsciousness um, already so that, for example uh, Albert Einstein when he thought of uh, theory of relativity might have actually had uh, the whole theory more or less uh, already established in his unconscious self. That might actually have been happening in Albert Einstein's brain. So, you know, 
the same can be said uh, for many many things and in, even in your brain uh, in, in your brain who are listening uh, to this episode of Street Brain Radio there might be many many elements hidden um, f- from your, um, your conscious self and you know these treasures might be lurking there to be discovered by you, uncovered by you, by some process or another. And uh, there could be many techniques. Uh, walking and talking like this is one of them. Um, I actually don't prepare anything uh, when I record these episodes of Street Brain Radio. I just start talking and walking and, well, it's the other way around, okay. I start walking and then start talking and just like talking to my iPhone. I don't have any prepared uh, script or anything. It, these words just comes, come out of my uncle's mind. So I'm quite surprised sometimes that uh, my street brain radio is coming to this. But in this process, there would be loops established between my conscious and unconscious uh, selves. And that's how we uh, undig, uh, dig, dig up uh, all these um, interesting and uninteresting, uh, inspiring and uninspiring elements in a cognition. Um, I suspect that recording of the dreams would positively correlate with the uncovering of unconscious processes in the brain. Uh, I'm just saying that, you know, probably uh, recording your brain does not uh, directly lead to the uncovering of many hidden er- cognitive elements in your brain per se. However, it might actually uh, positively correlate, statistically speaking, with the enhancement of your ability to become aware of uh, elements uh, hidden in your unconscious processes so that recording of, of your dreams does promote your creativity. Uh, that's uh, my hypothesis and I feel it to be true in uh, At least it's an uh, interesting hypothesis to be tested. And, um, I'm, I'm not necessarily trying to enhance my creativity when I you know, record my dreams talk into my iPhone and put it on my Japanese YouTube channel. Uh, I'm just doing it because it's so interesting. However, um, at the same time, I might actually be promoting my uh, creative self. And uh, that's an interesting idea. That's certainly an encouraging and interesting idea. Now I've come to area in Tokyo where there are many waterways. Traditionally, in the samurai period, Tokyo was a city of many waterways. But now, many of them have been covered. And it's a shame, I I know. Um, You know, so uh, one of the things that the Tokyo government could be doing uh, these days would be to uncover these waterways. And, you know, there's a very high profile case at Nihonbashi. Nihonbashi is the most important bridge in Tokyo. That was a starting point for journeys to uh, places like Kyoto, uh, Osaka in the samurai period. And, and so that was a culturally significant place. But um, in the run up to the Tokyo Olympics in 2064, uh, many w- waterways were covered with the metropolitan. Uh, speedway system and the Nihonbashi was uh, no exception. Nihonbashi literally means uh, the Japan Bridge so that's how important it is. It is the Japan Bridge so you know um, Nihonbashi is sadly although it's uh, still ground in its construction um, the bridge is sadly under the Tokyo Metropolitan Speedway system. So it doesn't really, it really look great. Uh, but um, pro- probably with the you know, proposed construction, uh, or deconstruction, should I say, 
uh, going forward in a few years, probably the Nihonbashi would uh, regain its grandiose, you know, for myself, and you know, that would be really great. Anyway, enough for my diversion here. Uh, so, dreaming, uh, I, I think, you know, actually dreaming is, itself is a um, process in which you recover your, you know, wholeness, uh, because after all, it is related to uh, the memory reconsolidation system process, and by sorting out and reconsolidating your memories, you become uh, even more uh, balanced and whole self. So that's one reason why we should be sleeping. Uh, it'll be great to have a good night's sleep because you can reset yourself and restore yourself and regain your balance. But in addition to that, uh, you know, many uh, people have testified that by dreaming, you sometimes become really creative. And there are many high profile cases for that. And, uh, you know, I'm not saying that dreaming is only for creating, but uh, probably one of the most inspirational ways to think about it is that creation is a process of restoring yourself. Uh, creation is a process of regaining a balance within you so that by creating you become a whole self so if you think about that uh, then uh, probably it makes sense to dream and make a full use of it and uh, one of the ways you could make a really great use of it uh, might be to record dreams that as I am doing so I heartily recommend you to talk into your iPhone uh, every time you wake up and you have some remembrance of the dreams. It doesn't take really much time, uh, you know, only a few minutes. And um, let's see how it can change your life. Uh, I have done this for only a, two, a few weeks, but I feel that it is already changing my uh, perception of my existence because I feel that I am not only the conscious self, but also the unconscious self. And that makes you, me a more balanced person. So I'm coming to the venue of my public lecture today. So I will be stopping this recording of Street Brain Radio pretty soon. So to some, um, dreams are great in sorting out memories and consolidating them. And in addition, dreams are a great way of recovering a balance of oneself. Creativity is also a salient process where you regain the wholeness of yourself. So by recording your dream and making a loop between the conscious and unconscious cognitive processes, you can hope to consolidate your past and also to create something new which would be harmoniously uh, incorporated into your existence and achieve a true nagomi of yourself uh, in the time dimension encompassing the present, first and the future. With that thought, I leave you and uh, thank you for listening to this episode of Street Brain Radio.